studio session at Sci-Fi 2022. Today we're going to be talking about content creation and its future in the digital age. My name is Supriya Paul and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Josh Talks and I have with me here today Opile. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Opile Chasala and I am sort of a content creator, poet, but I recently started working for a company called Poeto and Poeto Works and it's more of a tech education company. So I'm an education lead over there. Awesome. So uh, my organization, Josh Talks, is focused on inspiring people from lower income households in tier two, tier three, and tier four cities. We use storytelling as a medium to show them the future of what their career can be and hope that it inspires them to get up and take some change um, or you know, take some action towards positive change. Josh actually means energy in Hindi. So our objective is to drive energy into people, to dream big, do big, and create big things. Um, as a part of our work, we create close to 600 pieces of content every single month in 10 languages and work a lot with content creators and speakers. Uh, so my view on content creation is from 10 languages of India and what works best in each language. Would love to know more about you. Uh, mine isn't as noble, or um, it's it's a very indi individualistic kind of thing that I came to as a, a young uh, sociology student. I was just really inspired and wanted to write about my experience as a black woman in New, New Mexico, like a small, small part of the state, um, in a small town, Las Cruces, New Mexico. And then that's how I came to storytelling. But I've always been a storyteller. I come from storytellers. Um, What's really exciting about my life now, when I've put content creating to the side a little bit, because I understand the pressure, like it's difficult. Yeah. You have to be fully committed. And the tech world is just changing constantly. You have to be good at reels, you have to be good at this, you have to be good at that. You have to content creation, when I started off on Instagram, was as simple as you take a pretty picture of yourself and you write a poem underneath it, and all of a sudden you're an Instagram poet. Nowadays it's like you have to know how to juggle this and that and that and dealing with clients and constantly doing X, Y, Z. So now I've stepped back and I work, like I said, in tech education, but I'm interested in helping other people tell their stories. And Poeto Works, a company that I work for, um, is more interested in considerate technology, is interested in teaching and approaching technology from a culturally responsive kind of way, and, and including sort of creating storytelling, the way that you're working with storytelling, but teaching that tool to kids in the form of coding, you, realizing that creativity and tech are so closely related um, yeah, and so that's kind of my work. But I would love to hear more about how you came to start your organization. Yeah, so I think, um, you know, the objective or the frustration that we had when I was 20 and I was in university was that young people have so much potential, uh, especially those who come from smaller towns and cities in India. But because of lack of the right kind of information or guidance or access or even exposure, they don't end up living the lives that they can. Uh, you know, they still end up not moving or changing their orbit and they keep criticizing their background. Um, and I really felt that, you know, if there was a platform or there was a medium to just deliver the right kind of information to them, maybe in a form that was easily acceptable, uh, which is why we chose stories, that they would end up doing something. Um, and we started out with doing physical events, then moved online, and now we reach out to about 150 million people every single month who watch our content. Um, and a lot of them actually take career-based actions after watching our pieces of content. Well, I guess that's what my company is actually working towards. Yeah. It's that's getting awesome. kids excited about tech, getting kids excited about their communities and the artists who are up and coming within their communities, getting pe kids um, excited about representation and seeing people who look like them in their environment who are making a difference insofar as uh, creating. So with Poeta Works, we are actually doing, plat uh, we're doing workshops constantly with young kids in different schools in the LA area. Um, and we're looking at expanding. It's a new idea, it's a new thing in tech education, teaching kids coding with this combination of using like visual, um, using sound and using storytelling um, to show kids that people like me, a storyteller, can somehow be involved yeah. in tech and, uh, and make a career out of it, so that's, exciting to see how well aligned this 
talk is. <laughs> yeah. But uh, just on the use of platforms, so what we've sort of seen work from us, so we are a long form content company. So YouTube is primarily the platform that works for us. Um, and what we've seen for informational or actionable knowledge based content is that YouTube tends to deliver to that promise. Uh, you know, people complete videos, they take action based on videos, you're able to build what we call like cult like loyalty, mm -hmm. so that people keep coming back and wanting more. But just as your experience as a creator, an author and a poet would love to know what platforms did you use or do you continue to use and how have you changed that over time? Oh, wow, that's a lovely question. I thought, I wish my questions were as uh, well informed <laughs> um, because it's such a new space for me. And uh, the, the thing about tech is that it feels inaccessible. And yeah. my work as a poet has always been, even poetry felt like sort of an exclusive thing. You had to have the proper language, a proper training in order to be a respected poet. Um, and so I started writing poetry on Tumblr. I just saw short form poetry and I thought, this is really exciting. I'm someone with a different background. I did not study anything to do with literature, anything to do with creative writing, but I have a voice. And Tumblr was the first platform on which I worked. And then it got it got old pretty quickly. <laughs> but yeah. then we move on to the next thing. We moved on I moved on to Instagram and that's where I kind of gained a lot of engagement with and gained a community which was really really exciting. Um, because I thought, oh, this l little girl from Malawi who's telling these little stories won't uh, have such an impact on people, but somehow I did. Um, and that's kind of where my journey started. Um, yeah. And, and did you have, um, I mean, do, do you use short video platforms at all? <sighs> no. <laughs> And why is that? I mean, I have uh, I have my own view on mm -hmm. why we also don't use short video platforms. Mm -hmm. But for poetry, is that something that you you know consciously decided not to do? Uh, another lovely question. I would say that, like I was mentioning earlier, that these platforms have changed so much. Yeah. You can approach them and say, oh yeah, I'm good at poetry. Maybe that's all you're good at. Maybe that's all I was good at. But now you have to, the dynamics have changed, so you have to be good at doing videos and good at editing and good at this. It just became a kind of a laborious kind of lifestyle. I don't think that content creation is something everyone can do anymore. Yeah. Um, and that's why places like yours and your company are really important because you're making that more accessible and teaching people those tools in order to tell their stories. But I didn't have that experience. I went at it alone and um, I just dis found out that it's difficult to make videos. It's difficult to make to constantly make content um, that inspires, that changes lives, that makes people want to come back for more. So, But what are your views against like <laughs> videos? Anyway, basically yeah. the long and short is that it's hard. Yeah. I don't have the time. <laughs> yeah. No, um, I think uh, like my view on short videos is that it's a great format for entertainment and for um, you know low touch impact. But whenever you're looking at a platform that's trying to create maybe more tangible and actionable impact, long form form just works better. Uh, maybe we are a little traditional and authentic in our approach, but we've seen like 18 to 22 minute videos work a lot more for the segment that we are catering to, uh, especially because it's for learning. Uh, but I think what's really interesting in India right now is that content creation is actually one of the most wanted or the hottest careers. Um, and, you know, we are a country where traditional jobs or service oriented jobs have always been in the limelight, like you either become a doctor, an engineer, an accountant. And now there is like this huge 16 to 25 year old population that wants to become a YouTuber or you know, wants to make a business on Instagram, grow online. What are the trends that you are seeing uh, back home? Well, back home in Malawi, uh, everybody wants to be a content yeah. creator. A lot of people want to be content creators. I mean, uh, Twitter is something that people are constantly engaging with in Malawi, which is really interesting. Like It's where you get your news from, it's where you get people's lifestyle, life updates, it's where you, um, sort of engage with the community. I, I was really a part of this sort of Twitter world for the longest time where we even had Twitter awards in Malawi because the community felt like it's people you've been following for such a long time. And Malawi is such a small country um, that it felt like a community. And that community 
moved on to like real life and so forth and people are constantly building you go on twitter and you're like oh wow yeah. you guys have known each other for years but that was just what we were doing for entertainment nowadays i see more and more people moving into that space of making young malawian youtubers are out there um making travel vlogs which is really exciting i've seen a lot of that with tiktok tiktok malawi is insanely <laughs> funny it's <laughs> Um, it's exciting, but I don't know if it's profitable yet for people, which is kind of one of the issues with being a creator, a content creator, any kind of creator in Malawi. I think, like you were talking about earlier, the kind of careers that people were sort of pushed towards when they were younger here in India, or doctor, lawyer, it's the same kind of story with uh, black and brown people is that we're constantly told this thing of like, you, can, you have to be these things. Uh, and that's the only way you can succeed. And that's kind of what pulled me away from being trained as a writer in the first place. Like, I ended up wasting so many years. Hmm, wasting, not wasting. You gain something, you gain knowledge, you gain skills that you can use later, especially when the world is moving forward and you're not so good at creating content. I appreciate those skills. But to begin with, um, if our government poured more into creative, things, into writers, mm. into different kinds of storytellers. Malawians are funny, they're hilarious, they're comedians, they can make all sorts of content, day in, day out, but are they making money from it? You know? Uh, no. But yeah, I think that's a, I, I think that's a global problem, mm. and, um, and more so in developing countries, right? Um, like even in India, while this is one of the careers that everybody wants to take to, mm. and we also have short video platforms like Taka Tuck, our own version of TikTok, mm -hmm. that is sort of <laughs> brewing up. Uh, but monetization and making a career is a real challenge. Mm -hmm. So now it's this, uh, you know, this decision between do you want fame or do you want money? Mm -hmm. And money is not really being served by this model mm. to as many people, but mm. people are rising and you know wanting mm. fame. Mm. Um, and it's and it's strange. Like um, in in our own office, we have an administrative support function, so we have a person who helps us with tea, coffee, etc. Mm. Um, and his goal in life is to go viral. Mm. So you know he's saving up money and he's spending all that money and actually mm. producing songs in his mm. local language mm -hmm. in in Bhojpuri in Bihari. Mm. Uh, because his dream is to go viral. So this sort of content creation, which was accessible only to the top 1% to the top 10% of population who were, you know, literate or well-educated, mm -hmm. has completely changed. Mm -hmm. And everyone at the bottom of the pyramid is now wanting to create. So it's it's been super mm -hmm. interesting to see yeah. how, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's accessible to the world. Yeah. I mean, as a storyteller, I, I appreciate that. I, I think that that is necessary. It, it gets saturated with the kind of stories you hear. And, and uh, I know people are really uh, pushing for visibility, but visibility isn't everything. As someone who's been a storyteller, I'll tell you that visibility does not equal the coins that you want. It doesn't equal securing the bag. You can yeah. secure the views and hope that you, have to, you can secure the bag later, but it's quite difficult. But anyways, going back to those storytellers <laughs> and it being accessible to more and more people, I love that. I want to see people doing random things in random places in the world. Um, it opens up the possibilities of, for storytelling and whose story you hear. Because yeah. everybody's story is valid. It's important. Um, and I like that switch up. Oh, it's, it's exhausting to hear the same old story. <laughs> um, and like one of the, the the sort of key challenges or the mm. conversations that we've been having over here is, uh, you know, what are your responsibilities as a content creator? Mm -hmm. uh, because when you start acquiring an audience and you are now talking to one lakh people, you are probably as big as traditional media. Mm -hmm. Um, and that in itself is a huge responsibility, right? Mm -hmm. um, and being a poet yourself and someone who's a storyteller, how do you kind of keep your content authentic or in check? Like, do you have these mm -hmm. moral right and wrongs before you create or? Um, okay. I, I, I mean, I have a mental checklist in my head of what aligns with who I am as a person, not just as a content creator, as a person. Like, what are my morals? What are my values? What kind of thing would I not speak on? What kind of thing doesn't make sense to me? Um, what kind of thing should I let other people have a platform for? But as a poet, it's been even this kind of, 
censorship, self-censorship goes into my poetry too and it was feeding into my work. And I've decided to use my platform as something where I can try to be as authentic as possible, but it's tricky. On the internet, you write one thing and people think 10 other things and they drag you and they drag you and then they drag you. So it's, it can be such an ex exhausting existence. But if I, as someone who exists on the internet and in real life, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I try my hardest to be as honest as possible and and be apologetic when I have to be apologetic and allow myself to be teachable in places. So, yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> I think, um, you know, being too, true to yourself and true to your image that you put out on the internet is super important. And I feel like even content creators in India who've grown have been those who've stuck with their real identity mm -hmm. and not tried to be someone else on camera. Um, and dealing with hate and trolls is, of course, yes. a global phenomenon. <laughs> we all have to deal with it. But uh, I, I have also seen this amazing trend on our content where if someone pushes back and writes something negative, you do have an army of people who are supporting you, yeah. who are like the, the kind or the good army who then fl uh, you know, fight back for you. Yes. So uh, I think that's, that's a problem that we'll all have to deal with. Trolls be trolling. But I just want to know about what are your plans for the future of your organization? Like, what are you looking forward to the most? Uh, what's exciting? <laughs> yeah, so, uh, you know, we started out as a content organization focused on inspiring people, mm -hmm. but we, you know, have reached a stage where we feel that's not enough. Um, and now our second objective is that can we use what we've already built? Like, we have access to 100 million people watching our content. Can we now get them to enroll in skilling programs to actually become capable of getting jobs? So we launched our own application in 2020, which helps people speak in English yeah. just so that they can get the right kind of jobs. And now our focus is on launching more courses, helping them learn more, um, teaching people in 10 languages. So, you know, getting people right from the bottom of the pyramid to actually change their orbit. Mm. So it's an interesting uh, space, but our DNA is content first and content always. Mm. So that's why I'm super excited about what the future <laughs> of content looks like in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just circling back to uh, the fact that I'm working in tech education right now, I'm really, really excited about the potential for Poeta Works and seeing what happens to the kids who learn these skills of coding and who learn that it's okay to be creative and that uh, techiness doesn't always equal dorkiness and dorkiness is cool even <laughs> if it's techy. Yeah. Um, but that's something that I'm super excited about. It's, it's kind of opening up the tech world for myself too and realizing that uh, there are opportunities for creatives to bring in their voice. You don't have to have um, all the skill set and the knowledge and the language, but I'm a human and I exist in this space and I can uh, offer that to Poetic Works. Um, yeah, so I'm really, that's what I'm excited about. I'm excited about teaching kids tech and I'm excited about kids choosing careers that combine a lot of their interests. I'm excited about kids being inspired by their community and being proud of their community because we do serve a lot of underprivileged communities in the LA area being proud of their community and realizing that they can create things that are meaningful and lead a meaningful life. Yeah. No, I think that's, that's the true power of content and storytelling. And uh, it's been an amazing time talking to you and learning more about what you're doing. And I hope we can work together sometime in the future. First of all, this yeah. sounds like a connection right here. <laughs> I can't Absolutely. wait. Thank you so much for joining us. And stay tuned for more panels like this.